What's up, everybody? It's your boy Damon John here, aka the People Shark. Now, listen, over the past 30 years, I have learned a lot about the best practices to running a business, but I've also learned about the worst mistakes that most entrepreneurs make early on. And I gotta tell you, five things that if someone had have told me when I was launching FUBU, I would have absolutely been a good jillionaire now. But you know what? I can't look back in the past, but I wanna share the past with you because I wanna help you kickstart your business. Now, number one, every overnight success did not actually happen overnight. You hear people that come up to you and they either see you doing really well and they go, oh my God, you're blowing up when you know it's only been six months or a year, but you have not faced a lot of the challenges yet because you've blown up at the level you're at. Or you get into a business and you see somebody, you go, look at Damon John. He just made church. He just made this. You didn't hear about all my failures. Why didn't you hear about all my failures? Because first of all, my successes are the things that I'm going to keep talking about because they keep existing. Food Wife started in the late 80s and early 90s and you still hear about it because it was a success and it still is a success. Bomba Socks, I invested in on a Shark Tank and those guys are doing absolutely amazing. But I have failed thousands of times in between them. But the failure may have been just a small action I took that day and I realized I don't like this business. The fact that I couldn't find a partner. They didn't have to be massive failures. But you hear about these things and the successes after 10 years, 15 years. So make sure you're doing something you are absolutely obsessed with because what is your worst case scenario if you're doing something you're obsessed with and you're taking affordable steps? Well, maybe you were trying to be somebody in the travel industry, a travel blogger, and you travel the world, but you never really made money doing it. But what did you do? You travel the world. However, you may end up in 10, 15 years being somebody who did make money doing it, so you are even more of a success. But even if you failed, you did something you love, but it took a long period of time. You will blink your eye one day and find out about all the work that you've been putting into something, you're finally starting to realize it's growing. I really have not seen any company that have not taken three, five, and 10 years just to figure out who they were. Most companies are only successful after seven years and you generally only hear about them after 10. Now, let's talk about number two. Overanalyze your financials. Have financial intelligence. Most businesses fail from overfunding and I'll get to that. But I gotta tell you something, I don't want you to feel bad. I don't want you to feel intimidated. You know, they don't teach us what we need to learn in school about finance. They don't teach us about compounding interest. They don't teach us about um, what to do with taxes. They don't teach us those things. So do not feel bad about that. Now, let's talk about how do companies actually fail due to overfunding? Damon, it's so hard to find money out there, but often when you find money, you find it in the wrong way. Number one, if you have the ability to raise money, a lot of people raise it too soon. And the earlier you raise the money, the more it costs. That means if you ask Damon John for $50,000 for a company that you didn't sell anything yet out of the company, I like the idea. And I say, all right, I'll take 50% of the company. Well, then when you go off and I hope you win and you get to a million and two million and five million dollars a year, well, I'm not giving up my 50%. So now you got to go raise more capital. And what do you have to do now? Give up more of what you own. But didn't you get into business so you can own the business yourself? And now you only own 5% of the company. However, if you would have went out and you would have busted your butt and found who your audience was and sold just a small amount and gotten your little trademark here and gotten the legal work set up and found out who you were not attracted to and who would not buy your product and knew who your customer is, well then Damon John's $50,000 are no longer gonna cost you uh, 50%. Maybe I just want 5% of the company. Wait, maybe you don't even need to give up any of the company because you go to the bank and you show them that you have this small business and you go and get a small business loan and then you're just paying maybe 8% on a loan and they don't take any bit of your company. You need to have financial intelligence. And then sometimes you are fortunate enough to have a home to leverage or have uh, credit cards are the worst because you're gonna pay over 20% in interest on those things, but you have somebody who's gonna give you a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars Well, here's the problem when you get that massive amount of money. Well, everybody that comes to you and says they can help you build a social media website or everybody who says to you they can get you a patent or trademark, they're gonna charge you the normal cost. And you have no urge or no drive to say, well, I'll pay less. Why? Because you have a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars but 
It goes just like that. And you have to have financial intelligence. And whether you are running a large company or you're just balancing a checkbook at home, you have to have financial intelligence. And guess what? I closed FUBU down three times from 1989 to 1992, but I only lost a little bit of money, 500, 1,000. I was able to come back, but it was still the lack of financial intelligence. Everybody knows that I mortgaged my mother's house because I got turned down by 27 banks. Well, I got turned down by 27 banks because I didn't have financial intelligence. I did not know how to go out and apply for a loan. And even after I got the $100,000, thank God that I ended up getting a manufacturing and distribution deal because I was three months later on the mortgage, I only had $500 left in the bank from the $100,000 because I made financial mistakes like buying my goods 90 days ahead of time, telling my customers they could pay me in 30 and 60 and 90 days. I'm not a bank, that's a whole nother industry. I should have been getting COD. And when I made a couple of million, I also blew it too, not knowing how finance works. So I don't want you to think that it's something that cannot happen to you. All right, let's go on to number three. Number three is most people will not have your vision uh, or at the same level understand how to commit to your business. A lot of people will not have the same vision or commitment to your business. It's your business. You know, a lot of times when I find that people didn't understand my business, especially as I got into the big world of fashion, my partner used to tap me and said, if they knew exactly what you were thinking about or where you were going, there would be no room for us. It's very lonely at the top. However, when you start proving how much and how fast and how far you can go, you will convince everybody else. But it's because of your commitment. It's because you keep hearing no. You keep hearing no. Do not get mad at other people because they don't have your vision, especially when they work for you. Remember, a lot of people are working for you not because of your vision, but they have to feed their family. Maybe they just want to educate themselves. Maybe they want to get out of the house. Maybe you're doing something so amazing that they want to learn how to do other amazing things. It doesn't mean that they need to focus purely on your success. You are hiring them to do the best they can do. The accountants that work in my office have nothing to do with design. And the designers who work in my office have nothing to do with these other departments. And I don't ask them to be because everybody cannot have the same vision. You are at the top and you got to make sure that you understand how to share that vision and not take it out on people personally. If you believe they don't have the same commitment that you have, there's a reason why they didn't start a business and there's a reason why you did. All right, so now let's get to number four. Somewhere, someone has gone through exactly what you are going through and you need to find them and use them as mentors. Now, they may be going exactly through what you're going through in your specific industry, but they may be going through exactly or have gone through what you went through in finance, in searching for partners, in legal issues, in trying to network. The world is filled with mentors, but the most important part about a mentor is what's in it for the mentor when you approach them. Don't go up to them saying, well, you know what? I can't find any partners. Will you be my partner? That person's going to say, I'm looking for partners too in my life. What are you going to say? How can I be of value to you? And maybe if you have an opportunity to share me some insights or direct me some places that I may be going wrong. And that is something that anybody who's successful would love to pass on because I promise you somebody somewhere has went through they were going what they were going through and decided to mentor them. And last, and this is definitely not least, it is okay to ask for help. No one can do it by themselves. Hiring up, outsourcing things is the best way to do it. But knowing your weakness is just as important as knowing your strength. You know, entrepreneurs, they're truly vulnerable. They show a piece of vulnerability. I don't know this. I don't know this. Listen, when I came up, do you think I knew manufacturing, warehousing, shipping, taxes, billing, retail, wholesale, clothing, every single thing, I had to learn it. And I learned it by bringing other people in and asking them, how can I do this and learning? And you know what? Some people either confirm that you're doing it the right way, or some people will show you a new way to do it. And those are the most important things right now that I'm going to share with you. So knowing these uh, tips will help you uh, take away the unknown of starting your own business and allow you to thrive. So if you want more help with starting your business, I have a free course that breaks it all down for you. And I want you to be able to move one step closer to being a successful entrepreneur. So click the link up above to take that first step. 
So you know, I always say you should never stop trying to learn new things. So I hope you learned something new from that video. Now, if you're ready to level up and hear from business experts every week, give this video a like, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you soon.